Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, how are you? It's a rainy day. Can Not rainy. Along there would we'll probably be Radio 4. <coughs> Excuse me. What a load of rubbish they have on that Radio 4. Honestly, the one the channel that you'd expect to be the real premier news channel telling people what's really important about life and the world and what's going on and what do they have <clears throat> an endless succession of programs on the Dewey Decimal System do they have anything do they have anything on about the forthcoming financial implosion no you know, I think because they think it would cause it. If they actually told anyone anything about the way the way finances are organised, that they would cause so much panic that it would bring upon them the very apocalypse that they're trying to keep quiet. So, by definition, the public mustn't be told this till it's too late. When the point at which they can't do anything about it. Then they'll get told about it. It's a bit like the 2008 crisis. Anyway, I've just had a phone call. It's about uh, 20 to 9. I had a phone call about 10 to 8. And uh, it's uh, our, our uh, system uh, shows up the phone number. So if it's a phone and, and the surgery is in a different dialing code area, to where I am so if it comes up as an 081843 number then I know it's diverted from the practice so anyway it turns out uh, it's a very nice lady called Barbara oh Barbara uh, I've had a you know it's got a veneer fallen off one of her front teeth she's been referred to us by a patient you know who knows how good we are etc etc so he's this is the old, uh, you know, the patients acting as recruiting sergeants for your business. And uh, could she uh, come in? She wants to come in as soon as possible. And so I said to her, well, the best thing to do is to come in about nine o'clock and wait. And in fact, we have got an, a, a free slot and I don't think we start. Well, we didn't start till 10. Now, actually, they've now booked someone else in at half past nine. But I told her to come in at nine and wait because I, I was prepared to put the surgery to the inconvenience of having to fit in an extra patient just to get her veneer sorted out because I sympathise with her and you know having a veneer fall off at your front tooth is not a good look etc. This is assuming that um, we can stick it in but of, you know if anyone can we can and that's a good uh, approach actually you know and it's also with uh, with the patients like that as well that sort of slogan if anyone can we can so she, she said how much is it and I mean I honestly I, like most dentists I don't necessarily carry the fee scale in my head I mean if you're an NHS practitioner you've only got three fees so I suppose it doesn't make any difference to you you, you can sort of tell them straight away what band it's going to be but to be honest with <laughs> no offence but an NHS dentist is not going to be answering the phone at 5 to 8 in the morning are they and saying yeah coming at 9 o'clock so I don't have the private fee scale in my head so I was trying to work out whether it's uh, comparable to sticking in a, um, a crown or uh, repairing a denture or something and I th all of these come in at under £100 so I was, so I said to her like I don't know offhand how much it's going to be uh, but it's going to be under £100 so I mean that would include like a checkup, digital x-rays, advice, oral hygiene advice etc if necessary and re-cementing the crown so um, <clears throat> she said well do, do you know exactly so when a patient says do you know exactly that is a sign that they are going to have trouble funding the treatment because the only reason that you would know want to know exactly is because you need to have a scrape around and get your hand down the side of the sofa to see if you can get the amount that's being asked and you can't afford to you know someone who's quite a wealthy person 
would go along and say, well, you know, if it's if it's under a hundred, then fine. If it's not, I'll you know, on my I'll stick it on my card because they've got like an unlimited line of credit, as they say in Canada. They have a you have a line of credit, whereas uh, some people don't really have a line of credit. You know, they have to know in advance how much everything's going to be. So I said, no, I don't know exactly, but it's on the website. So anyway. I tell you, if you're a woman, then shut your ears now, because I'm going to tell you how it turned out. If you're a man, and you're being driven mad by the fact that I'm stretching out this story, and you really only want to know how it turns out, then, in fact, she ended up not coming in. And actually, I've said to a Penny, the receptionist, that I don't really want to see her. Um, but you can open your ears now. So, anyway, so... You know that she's tight of money. I said to her, oh, "Can you get on the website? Because all our fees are on the website." No, I'm not. I don't really, you know, that internet thing. I don't really know how to work that. Okay. Um, shall I? Would you like me to look it up for you and uh, get back to you? Because there's no point, you know. I mean, if she wants to know exactly how much it is so that she can budget for it. She's going to need to know before she comes in, isn't she? And the only way that she's going to need, she's going to know before she's due to come in, if she's coming in at nine, is if at eight o'clock in the morning, I log on to the practice computer remotely and find out exactly to the pound how much it costs to stick a veneer in, because that's the only figure <clears throat> she needs. So, so, <clears throat> but I've learned to get people's details. So <clears throat> I took her through the whole. What's your name? What's your date of birth? What's your address? Uh, you know, and all, all this. Uh, you know, have you? What's your mobile number? Have you got a mobile number? Have you got a, uh, an email address, etc.? So we get all that, and then I tell her I'll ring her straight back. Log on to the practice computer, find out how much it is. It's uh, sixty-four pounds, sixty-four, sixty-five pounds, something like that. Sixty-five, I think. So I create a new record for her, book her in at nine o'clock to stop anyone else doing it. Fortunately, we've got the time. Oh. Sorry, junction of death. Just got to avoid death. There we go. <coughs> Ring her back. Hello, Barbara. It's uh, 65 pounds. Silence. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, 65 pounds. Yes. Uh, having told her that it was going to be under 100, I wasn't expecting her to go into fiscal shock from 65. I actually think 65 is quite a long way under 100. I thought if she was going to have her shock, she'd have had it at 100. She'd have gone, oh my God, 100 pounds. That's a lot of money. But now, having not batted an eyelid at me telling her it was going to be under 100, she's now having a fit over 65. Now, I've got to say, as a negotiating tactic, that is a good tactic, and I recommend it, and I use it myself sometimes. Just, just say, oh, you know, I thought it was going to be much less than that. You know, you'd be amazed at how many people will, so you'll embarrass them into actually reducing the amount of money that they ask. But sure enough, so off she, she's doing this, you know, oh, 65, well, that's a lot of money. And, um, <clears throat> but obviously not not meeting with much in the way of sympathy from my point of view, because, uh, because <laughs> for this 65 quid, in addition to all the checkup and x-rays, the oral hygiene advice and the general, you know, advice on her mouth, plus having the veneer stuck in, at, at short notice at nine o'clock on the day that she rang bearing in mind that she rang at uh, seven something and got through to the dentist straight away and now she's complaining about the cost I mean I can't see in, as a service I can't see how we could improve upon that as a service other than do it for nothing which is really what she wanted so she's like, well, oh, I don't know, you know, 65 pounds, 65 pounds is a very, very large amount of money. Now, the problem with Barbara is that she's 73, okay? And what was I watching last night? I was watching last night something about, uh, there was an old, oh no, the, the, Laurel and Hardy, my, um, 
my daughter bought me a Laurel and Hardy box set. And Laurel and Hardy made a lot of films. I mean, a lot of films. It's taken me, it's going to take me three months to work my way through this thing, unless I take time off work to watch it all. And they did like a sketch about a guy who comes home who's, you know, about the futility of trying to keep any money from your wife. And uh, he, he literally came home with his wages. And he, what he'd done was, he'd, he'd kept, he gave his wife five dollars and he tried to keep three. So, and I'm thinking there, well, you know, most of Laurel and Hardy's films were made in 19, late 1920s, early 1930s just when the talkies were coming in and uh, this one must have been about 1932 or something and uh, so I'm thinking well that, that you know and it's so great the historical context is great there's a guy coming home with eight dollars in wages for, for a week's you know he's working for a dollar a day pretty much <coughs> and the problem with someone who's 73 now won't have been born much after Laurel and Hardy were doing their films and so I can see where she's coming from you know she's she's 73 and she says oh 65 pounds is a lot of money well that is very true I felt like saying Barbara that is very true when you were young 65 pounds was a colossal amount of money a really a colossal amount of money but you don't know anything about the market for sticking on veneers you're not you've got nothing to compare it to other than your memory of everything being really cheap when you were young <clears throat> what you're doing is she was really making a commentary on inflation on inflation of the money supply and the fact that a hundred years ago you know that the, the, the pound and the dollar have lost so much of their purchasing power due to the fact that they've been over printed and sort of just generally diluted by the, by the amount of money that's uh, been created since she was young <clears throat> so there's on the one hand you, you've got this severe disparity between our two assessments of the what the value of having a crown stuck on were hers that 65 pounds <clears throat> was practically the cost of a house and mine, which was that for the service that she was receiving, £65, I thought was, was pretty reasonable. Anyway, uh, it ended up with me uh, saying to her, look, uh, if you continue to ring round, then you may well find someone who will do it for cheaper. And that's, you know, and then I felt then that I discharged my obligation to her in terms of acting in her best interests because if she did genuinely think that 65 pounds was a large amount of money and I you know I do think that she did genuinely think that if she wasn't just negotiating and trying to haggle me nobody tries to haggle a dentist down really do they I've had one or two but really not not she wasn't trying to haggle me down she was just you know uh, uh, you know she <laughs> what well, she was really thinking out loud, you know. She was just thinking. It wasn't like a question or a statement. She was just her brain coming out through her mouth. And I don't even know what she expected to do. I, I don't know whether... I mean, perhaps she will be able to get it stuck on cheaper. Well, I'm sure if she finds an NHS dentist who can stick it on, then uh, she will get it done cheaper. But having said that, I've had a patient in last week who had a post ground that kept coming out. One of these tiny little... <laughs> <laughs> dentator screws buy shares in dentator screws I tell you they're the on the health service they are the de facto post now nobody uses a, a laboratory fabricated posts and cores now they're all surgery made and the surgery favorite is the cheap and cheerful tin plated dentator screw and she'd had a crown that had been made on a dentator screw this is not Barbara this is this woman last week and um, it had, it had uh, been all right for about 20 years, which these things are. You, you tend to find that they're, they're brilliant until they fall out, and then, then they fall out, then they fall out with re increasing frequency until they're out every week. And she'd been going back every week, this woman, to have this uh, thing stuck back in. And every time 
it's stuck back in. It won't go back in because they don't bother to clean the glue out. What they do is they file the dentator screw down a bit so that it loses it loses all its um, uh, screw threads and everything, and then eventually it just ends up being a tiny little thing like a like a drawing pin. And then they stick that back in, charge the patients 30 quid, and off they go again. So this is uh, presumably Barbara is going to go off and find one of these services. Is going to stick her veneer on, and then uh, you know in a, you know, three months' time it'll need stick, and then two months, then one month, and then it'll be off every week. So anyway, but that's it. You know, I mean, that's that's there's provision for everybody. You know, I mean, that's. It's unfortunate when in, they made this mistake in 1948, bringing money into dentistry, and so how much money you have has an effect on the sort of dentistry you can get. So, what had happened with this post is that eventually it got so thin and so short that the next time the patient had bitten on it, it had fractured a massive great lump off the root. And I'm not at all sure that I can make a crown that will make up for that deficiency but the point is that I've said that I'm prepared to give it a try whereas the uh, last dentist really I think wanted to do an implant they wanted to do an implant oh, and it's complicated they wanted to do an implant because they'd done a Maryland bridge which was a hanging out you know the pontic was hanging over the was hanging off the end so and that and they'd done that <laughs> they'd done that because they stuck this six unit Maryland bridge on, which was two abutments, two pontics and two abutments. And then and then two of the abutments had just completely debonded. So what they did was they they cut them off. They didn't bother to try and they didn't say, oh, that shouldn't have happened. Let me remake that or let me even remove it and rebond it. No, let's just cut those off. And we'll leave two abutments uh, supporting two free end pontics. So anyway, uh, so I said to Barbara, just ring around, but the, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, at the end of the day, do you want to see the Barbaras of the world? I mean, do you, do you really want to see people who are coming to see you against their better judgment? Do you know what I mean? They're, they're coming to see you because they have, no, they feel like they've got no choice and that you're, you are an evil monopolist. <laughs> you're... You're taking advantage of them, you know. There's, there's too much scope there for conflict and uh, conflict of personalities, if nothing else. You know, I mean, I was, I was, I'm sort of still sitting there, you know, with my porridge going cold and my toothbrush hanging out of my mouth, trying to sort this woman out, and she decided that she was going to complain, and she, you know, she wasn't very bright either because she said. One of the one of the things she, you know, I said to her, how much, you know, when she asked me to ring up and find out, she asked me to find out exactly how much the veneer was. And and then she said to me, and then and then what, and also what time do I come in? And that itself, she didn't understand what the contradiction in that was because if she was going to come in anyway, if she was going to come in anyway. You know, pretty well, irrespective of what I rang her back and told her the price was, then there's no reason why she shouldn't have found out the price when she came in. At the point, uh, bearing in mind that I'd given her a guarantee that it was going to be a hundred, hundred, hundred pounds, and so on, on that basis of me guaranteeing it on less than a hundred pounds, her needing the appointment, us having the appointment, and her asking what time she should then come in, I thought the whole thing was a done deal. But when she said, no, no, I would like you to ring me back and tell me how much the, uh, how much the veneer is, then the, then the whole thing fell apart, didn't it? At that point, the appointment then no longer became necessary because there, there existed then a possibility that she might turn around and say, as she did, that that's too much. Therefore, appointment needs to be cancelled, you know? So she's not, in her brain, it's just this massive amount of fog and do you want a load of fog in the practice? Really, I mean, do you? Do you want these women of a certain age who, uh, who uh, you know, want health service treatment, health service fees 
or preferably free uh, for, for service, which is, you know, above and beyond what she, she could reasonably expect even in Harley Street. They won't, even in Harley Street, they won't be opening up till 10 o'clock. So, <clears throat> anyway, silly, isn't it? One silly phone call. And it brings up so many issues. It raises so many issues about uh, uh, patients, patients' treatment, ethics, uh, treatment, uh, provision, systems, etc. I mean, perhaps I'm overthinking it. But I think it's certainly better to overthink it than underthink it. What do you think? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.